I want to kind of jump back a little bit. I meant to ask this when we touched on it, but I was thinking of something that gets a lot of attention when we talk about like adversity or even just loss. And it's the, the Kubler or Ross stages of grief. And I was curious on your thoughts on that, because I know from a empirical side of it, it gets a lot of criticism. But is it one of those things like you just take what makes sense and leave the rest? Or is it something you look at as like, mm, I don't know? You know, I think my personal opinion on it is like, yeah, there's a lot of different things that people tend to go through when they grieve. But as a therapist, I really don't like that those stages are out there because what would happen is, is somebody would come in and they'd be like, what stage am I in? Or how do I hurry up and get to the next stage? As if it were like a linear process. And it's not. When we go through grief, whether you're grieving because you lost a loved one or you're grieving something else in your life, you like you lost a job, like it's not a straight line. Things go up and they go down. You might be angry one day, sad the next. And it's like a wave where you might be happy for three weeks and then boom, something hits you again. So I don't like the fact that people were always just looking like to rush through all of the stages as fast as they could just to get to the next one and think, okay, the, the anger's over. I'm, I'm moving on now. And it's not really like that. And so I do believe that we do experience all those different kinds of emotions for the most part, but that they don't necessarily happen in a nice, neat order. And granted, you know, they've come out and said, said just that, but I don't think the message gets out there to everybody. There's still a lot of people who have that belief that like grief is something that you um, can hurry through or work through really quickly. And then you're going to come out better on the other side. And my other big one is when people think that time heals because it doesn't, I would have people that would come into my therapy office and it might be 10 years after something horrible happened and they were just still waiting to feel better, but they hadn't really worked on anything. Instead, they just tried to avoid the pain as much as they could for 10 years, thinking that, if enough time passed that somehow their wounds would heal, but they hadn't yet. So I think there's so many um, misconceptions out there and we don't really talk about grief and we applaud people when they tend to look good after they go through something, whether it's some sort of trauma, like they're like, oh, wow, you're so strong. You just made it through that looking unscathed, <laughs> but you never know what kind of scars people have on the inside. And I don't think that we should applaud people because they look like they uh, aren't in pain on the outside. As a therapist, I got the inside scoop on how people were. And I mean, I had people that from the outside looked like they were fine. fine. They had amazing jobs. Yeah. They looked incredibly put together. They laughed, they smiled, and they would come into my office and tell me the intense pain that they were in. And yet most people in their lives, sometimes even their closest friends or family members had no idea. But because they'd been applauded for being really strong, quote unquote, and getting through something, they just now felt like, well, how would I tell anybody otherwise? Or I feel pressure to keep acting like I'm okay when I don't feel okay on the inside. Yeah, because that, that's a great point. Because you look at, say, all you celebrities, since we, we don't know them, but we see them more than we see the average Joe every day, like people like Robin Williams, who literally spent 40 years making people laugh. Or recently, there was a guy, he um, DJ Twitch from The Ellen Show, and he was a dancer. And I don't really follow him that avidly, but I knew he was pretty big on positivity and he was a dancer. So the people love people who make them laugh and feel good. And then you see things, unfortunately, that they would end up doing. And it's like, so when going back to what you said, it sets that precedent of like, like we mentioned before with the stoicism argument, like, oh, they didn't feel bad. They must be OK. And it, it goes to the point of they might want someone to check on them. Like, who, I think you mentioned kind of earlier, like who's strong for the strong people when they get weak? Because they're like, well, I know they're not going to help me, so I might as well just bottle it up. And like I said, in your line of work, you probably see that more often than not. I do. And the longer we cover things up and we keep it inside, and it's just so hard to come forward and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling or I'm having a hard time. Or you know, how do you suddenly talk to your friends or your family? How do you call them up and say, I'm having a hard time with this if they, if they don't know already? And I like it when we hear stories of people who who are struggling and they because they come forward and they have the courage to say you know even though i look like i'm all together on the outside here's what's going on and sometimes it's easy for celebrities or athletes to say yeah i used to have depression but i'm all better now but lately i think if anything good came out of the pandemic it's that more people are stepping forward and saying i'm struggling and i'm still struggling and i'm out here talking about it even though i'm still having a difficult time with this and I think when we see more of that, it kind of normalizes like, wow, a lot of other people struggle too, because one of the biggest things I would see as a therapist is people would come into my office and say, I'm having a hard time, but I feel like I'm the only one struggling with this. Well, then the next person would come in and say almost the exact same thing. 
and nobody would know that, yeah, there's a lot of other people struggling with the same kinds of issues or the same uncomfortable feelings because we don't talk about them. We tend to put the the shiniest, best stuff on social media. And when people say, how are you? It's tempting to say good. Or I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't want to be negative. So I don't want to tell anybody that I'm having a hard time. And they feel guilty if they were to say, you know, I'm, I'm having a difficult time because they think I'm bringing my friends or family down and I don't want to do that. And I, I hate to hear that because I feel like, how do we really connect with people? It's often being vulnerable and sharing about the things that we're struggling with. 